A deadly disease has been wiping out West Coast starfish for more than a year. It's called sea star wasting syndrome, and it causes starfish to die in a particularly gruesome fashion. One place that's held off the disease the longest is Alaska. Scientists recently traveled there to search for new clues. Katie Campbell has the story. It's early morning in Sitka, Alaska. The stars have yet to fade from the night sky. Right ahead, you just bag it, then I'll jump off. And a group of scientists is setting out to look for a different kind of star. Sea stars, commonly known as starfish, have been vanishing from Alaska's shoreline. Pete Ramondi is one of the lead scientists studying an alarming epidemic that's been killing starfish by the millions. These cracks from the previous years have been full, guys. You, know, you didn't guys didn't get any last time either, did you? Back in June? This is what? if you found a Pycnopodia. Ramondi and researcher Melissa Miner have been conducting intensive surveys of Pacific coastal areas, tracking the spread of the disease. Almost everywhere we've looked in the last year, we've seen catastrophic losses of sea stars. Ramondi pounds bolts into rocks so that year after year, they can find and survey the same areas. Once they've roped off a patch of shoreline, the team counts and measures the creatures that live here. Catch Ryan of 40, Catch Ryan of 30. Sitka was one of the first places they noticed signs of the disease last year. Eight leptosterius. I have a mildly sick lepta. Now the team is back to check on the stars. 70, 70. The question is, will starfish in the cool waters of Alaska survive this outbreak? 100. Or will they too succumb? You guys haven't seen many juveniles? No. I haven't seen any. I've got uh, one uh, mildly sick lepto. It's definitely not severely wasted, but those are what we're calling early warning signs of wasting. So this is the beginnings of um, two separate lesions and sometimes what we see is those will grow together and actually um, this, the whole tissue will start to kind of degrade. The symptoms vary depending on the species of starfish, but it usually starts the same way. As they get white lesions, they become necrotic, that means the tissue dies, and as the tissue dies they oftentimes will lose arms and then waste away. We call it wasting away, they disintegrate. Sometimes they get lesions and their internal organs start to kind of spill out of these lesions. And that can happen within 24, 48 hours, so it can be really quick. Starfish deaths were first reported in the summer of 2013 on Washington's Olympic Peninsula. Reports have since surfaced along thousands of miles of North America's Pacific shores. Sea star wasting syndrome affects almost every species of West Coast starfish. The plague has hit so hard over the last year that biologists fear that some species could even go extinct. Scientists have been scrambling to find answers. So this is a healthy Pycnopodia, no signs of lesions. Drew Harvell is coordinating nationwide research into understanding the wasting syndrome. She's been studying marine diseases for decades. This is the largest disease outbreak that we know of ever in the oceans in terms of the numbers of species affected, in terms of the geographic scale, and in terms of the mortality that's associated with it. After analyzing countless samples in the lab, Harvell's team believes an infectious pathogen, a type of densovirus, may be the root of the problem. This is what we call a wide host range pathogen. It means that it affects many different species, and those are the most dangerous in wildlife disease in terms of a potential risk of extinction. They've learned the syndrome seems to spread through water and through physical contact. And they're testing a hypothesis that the pathogen may be transferred through shellfish, which starfish like to eat. Exactly what triggers these outbreaks is still unknown, but scientists think the disease could be compounded by warming waters. Starfish are stressed by higher temperatures, which make them more vulnerable to infection. Harvell has been keeping an eye on the once abundant starfish populations around Washington's San Juan Islands. Cold waters here may have helped starfish withstand the first wave of the disease, but summertime brought warm waters to the islands, and Harvell and her team watched stars suddenly get sick. I'm expecting that in the next two weeks we will lose virtually all the stars at this site. And that's exactly what happened. All the starfish that were here are now gone. As outbreaks continue in Puget Sound, scientists are looking north for a sign of hope. The hope 
is that the waters are cold enough in Alaska, the northern part of the range for many of these species, that they'll persist there. This summer, Melissa Miner was hopeful that would be the case. This is one of the few places that um, could potentially be a source of replenishment for some of these areas that have been hit really hard. Back in Sitka, trouble is on the horizon. In recent months, water temperatures here have been higher than normal. A band of warm Pacific water is expected to travel farther north, heating up the waters here even more. To prepare, Ramondi is installing sensors to measure the water temperature. And so we'll get really good records over the next year of temperature, and then we can see whether that relates to any uh, change in the disease that we see uh, at this particular site. And we want to see whether we get a signal of warm water with wasting here. That way, if a mass die-off occurs, they'll know the exact ocean conditions. Piazaster 70. Another Piazaster 70. There's nothing the researchers can do to prevent an outbreak. But they can count and measure what's here now. Their data will provide a critical point of comparison for what normal starfish populations should be. If you don't know what's there, you won't know what's lost. Balanus, rock, rock, balanus. Cathrina, Cathrina. The results of the Alaska intertidal surveys are mixed. So this animal here is probably the worst one that we've seen today. And you can see it's diseased pretty heavily along this arm and then it's also spreading onto this arm. The good thing is that there's not a really high percentage of diseased animals. It's impossible to tell whether the epidemic is nearly finished or whether another mass die-off is just getting started. Not knowing where we are and the chronology of this event is really frustrating and kind of scary. After leaving Sitka, Ramondi and Miner began receiving disturbing reports. The healthy looking starfish they carefully counted just days before were suddenly losing arms and wasting away. Time will tell whether Alaska will be a starfish graveyard or a refuge.